Every time you leave your home to go shopping, to work, or school, your trip is directly affected by the location of our roads, commercial centers, and schools. The location of community amenities has always been important to people of all civilizations. Although many may think that land use planning originated in the 20th century, in reality, city planning has been around for thousands of years. As early as 2600 BCE, the city of Harappa in Pakistan included the world's first urban sanitation system. Mesopotamia, or modern-day Iraq, and ancient Egypt were urban centers thousands of years before the modern era. The ancient Roman Empire, which lasted from 27 BCE to 476 AD, was the first to lay out city streets at right angles in the form of square grid. The star-shaped city design originated in Italy in the 1500s and became popular during the Renaissance. The city was arranged in a star shape to resist cannon fire from invading armies. In 1682, William Penn planned the city of Philadelphia on the Delaware River to serve as a port and a place for government. Hoping that Philadelphia would become more like an English rural town instead of a city, Penn laid out roads in a grid pattern to keep houses and businesses apart. His plan showed five areas for public gatherings. The city's inhabitants, however, did not follow Penn's plan. They crowded by the river, subdividing and reselling their lots. President George Washington asked Pierre L'Enfant to design Washington, D.C. in 1791. The plan shows most streets laid out in a grid pattern with diagonal streets that would be named after the states of the Union. The diagonal streets intersected at circles and rectangular plazas that would later honor notable Americans and provide open space. In 1909, Daniel Burnham developed the first comprehensive plan for the controlled growth of an American city, the city of Chicago. It was an outgrowth of the City Beautiful movement, and the plan included proposals for the lakefront and declared that every citizen should be within walking distance of a park. New York City established the first zoning codes in 1916, primarily to stop massive buildings that prevented light and air from reaching the streets below. It established staggering setbacks at certain heights, resulting in the Art Deco skyscrapers built in the 1920s and the 30s. The Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of zoning in 1926 with a case entitled The Village of Euclid, Ohio v. Ambler Realty Company. Euclidean zoning is characterized by the segregation of land uses into specific districts to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Recently, Euclidean zoning has received criticism for its lack of flexibility. In 1947, construction began in Levittown, New York, the first mass-produced suburb in the U.S., and it is widely regarded as the model for post-war suburbs throughout the country. The passage of the GI Bill and its low interest, zero down payment mortgages to veterans in 1944, the invention of the window mounted air conditioner in 1945, and the authorization of the interstate highway system in 1956 allowed for rapid growth in suburban areas. Similar to Levittown, Charlotte County has been transformed from a small farming and fishing community between 1950 and 1990. Charlotte County's population doubled every 10 years. The residents of Charlotte County live today with the decisions of past land planning and development. One of the first things that visitors who come to Charlotte County probably notice is the traffic and the commercial activity on Tamiami Trail. However, along with suburban lifestyle in Charlotte County are numerous empty lots that contribute to the area's sprawling development pattern. To understand how this area grew, it helps to know a little bit about the early history of the area. Small communities such as Live Oak Point, Hickory Bluff, and Harborview existed as fishing villages and cattle runs. John Murdoch brought the railroad to Charlotte County in early 1900s. When Murdoch's farming colony failed, the land was sold to A.C. Frizzell, who eventually amassed 80,000 acres by 1950. This land was then bought by General Development Corporation in 1950 and designed as a vacation and retirement community. Life then was quiet, relaxing, and inviting as residents and visitors enjoyed recreation on the local rivers and Charlotte Harbor. After a few years, though, 
Port Charlotte's success in attracting retirees and vacationers posed some challenges. Numerous businesses sprang up to accommodate both permanent and temporary residents. As these business owners and their families became part of the community, they required services of their own such as schools, utilities, and more extensive commercial services. Port Charlotte, intended to be a simple retirement community, has evolved 60 years later into a much more complex suburban area. We've seen the same transformation occur across Florida. By the 1980s, the state had recognized the need to manage this explosive growth and Florida's Growth Management Act was passed in 1985. With it came the requirement to plan for the future to ensure that Florida's natural resources were preserved and land was used wisely. But how do you plan an area that has already been built? In truth, Port Charlotte was created more to be sold than to be lived in. Land in Charlotte County was divided into thousands of lots which were sold to people from all over the country and all over the world. Not all of those lots have been built on, but they could be. Whole blocks remain empty, but there are also hundreds of miles of streets that were built. Most of these streets are maintained, and for public safety reasons, must have traffic and street signs. Unfortunately, many of these empty lots and streets have become dumping grounds for yard waste, debris, and trash. The desire to promote the Florida lifestyle meant that much of the waterfront property became residential development, limiting public access to the water and creating environmental issues such as mangrove loss and the degradation of wildlife habitat. With its history as a retirement community and vacation spot, the economy was not diverse, traditionally based on retail, services, and the building industry. There are no office parks in Port Charlotte, no downtown, or town center, only a narrow strip of stores and shopping plazas that stretch for miles along the highway. The strict separation of land uses, resulting from Euclidean zoning practices, has resulted in an auto-dependent community, leading to increasing traffic on local roads. Low-density residential and commercial development requires paving large amounts of land for streets and parking lots, which leads to increased stormwater problems such as flooding and water pollution. Because residential and commercial development already exists, planners face challenges that are the result of unintended consequences of prior development decisions. The goal of land use planning is to work for a better quality of life for now and in the future while respecting an existing patterns of development. Land use planners address these issues by questioning the possible outcomes of various development decisions, asking the what if questions. What if we continue to grow in our current pattern? We will experience much of the same type of development, for good and bad, that we see now. What if we change the pattern to allow residential, commercial, and other uses to mix more closely than they do now? Opportunities could expand for job and housing choices in a variety of development styles and people could travel by walking or biking rather than exclusively by car. What if we allow residential development at higher densities in some areas? This could allow for greater variety of housing choices and produce concentrations of people at key areas to support public transportation. What if we encourage more office and industrial use? We could attract an, an employment center that would provide higher paying jobs for county residents. As our community continues to grow, evolve, and plan for the future, the Community Development Department is committed to implementing a land use and development framework based upon principles that will do the following. Preserve open space, water resources, natural beauty, and critical environmental areas. Preservation of these areas benefits the natural environment and keeps them available for future generations to experience and enjoy. Preserve farmland. Agriculture is an important sector of the county's economy and should be treated that way. Strengthen and direct development towards existing communities, which saves the cost of adding infrastructure in outlying areas. Take advantage of compact building design. This helps achieve a population density that supports transportation alternatives. Provide a variety of transportation choices that will support cycling, walking, and public transportation. Land use decisions affect everyone's daily routine. Citizen participation is vital to the decision-making process. By working together, we can all contribute to the vision for Charlotte County's future. 
For more information about the Community Development Department, please call 941-743-1200 or visit charlottecountyfl.gov. Thank you.